Well, exciting times. Here we go. We've had a, a delivery in up at the uh, up at the school of some um, uh, plug plants. Not something we've done before, really, on this scale. Anyway, uh, had a bit of an offer. I think it's seventy-two of these um, these little plug plants, um, which have just been delivered, and. Well, they don't look too bad. I mean, it's it's never very enjoyable for plants to be shoved in an envelope and sent through the post. Um, but they're quite cleverly, quite cleverly kind of packaged in these little these little plugs. Some of them need uh, definitely need some um, well, some sunshine <laughs> and some some water. They look quite good. Nice begonias there. Oh yeah, fellas. Yeah, they look really strong. Um, so we're going to get these guys uh, into some fresh air and into some sunlight uh, and, to, and more, uh, equally importantly, into some fresh compost. We're going to pot them up into uh, uh, these, uh, these packs here. Uh, and let's see how they look. Let's get started. Right, there we go we've got them unpacked and um as soon as you if you ever you're you're getting some uh, plants sent in the post you need to get them unpacked as quickly as possible get some air around and get them into some uh, some decent light and uh, we've got some really strong ones here these um these gazanias here look really good and the begonias uh look great um uh there's a couple here that not so good and i'll probably just um well, I have already sent a photograph to the um, to the supplier. In my experience, uh, the suppliers are, you know, very understanding. If there's a problem, I think probably half of those will be fine. Half of them are a little bit, you know, suspect. We'll just see how they get on. Um, but uh, normally, the uh, the supplier will find some way of uh, um, recompensing on a on your next order or something like that. Um, I'm obviously <laughs> I can't speak on their behalf. I can't promise. But I think if you approach people with the right attitude, um, generally they'll they'll help you out. They want your return business, don't they? So that's that. But look, the majority of these plants are looking really strong. Let's get them uh, potted up. Here we go. So this is what um, comes out of those little plugs. Uh, you can see there's some uh, some nice little roots there, nicely neatly formed in that little kind of um, uh, pyramid of um, of compost, and they should. Quite easily just slide out of the um there we are slide out of the pack as it happens we've got six six of each oh some lovely roots on that one um we've got six of each of these plants and uh we're potting them onto little packs of six here so that suits me there's a little bit of ocd in me and i like a i like things to work out like that so all I would do, you could get a dibber onto this, but I would probably just use my finger and press the compost lightly around the roots there. And that's all there is to it. Um, well, actually, that's not quite true. We need to give them some water and get them into the greenhouse. But um, there we are. Now, this compost, as you can see, has got all sorts of bits and pieces. Uh, there's a big thing in the UK at the moment of trying to go peat free and uh, although I think that's a great idea um, the reality is we haven't got enough anywhere near enough of uh, an alternative to, to peat available at the moment and I think this compost here is a sensible compromise uh, this is a vastly reduced peat content so they're mixing in other uh, organic materials in there and I think this is down to about 35% peat now um, compared to what it would have been maybe 80 or 90 percent peat um, a few years ago so we're heading in the right direction trying to be more uh, sustainable and, and planet um, planet friendly uh, you, you might be tempted to put these plugs into um, bigger pots than, than these and I, I certainly was um, I'm putting them into these packs partly to save space because our greenhouse is already getting quite full in there I'm that stand over there is where we're going to put these um these plants um so it's partly to save space and we can pop them into a larger pot 
in a month or two's time if we need to. Um, but it's also in recognition of the fact that sometimes if you put a young plant into too large a pot, it'll be surrounded by too much wet compost. Um, there's a kind of a tricky line you have to walk here now for the next um, the next few weeks uh, when this plant, these young seedlings or, or, or young cuttings, plug plants, uh, are going to be rooting into the compost. They haven't got enough root to suck all the water out of the compost. And you can end up, if you're not careful, with kind of stagnant water hanging around in very wet compost, which can cause the plants to rot off. So we're putting them into these cell packs so we can give them a little bit of a drink, but they should be able to drain um, fairly quickly, which may sound like a negative. You don't want them to dry out, obviously, um, but we don't want them to be too wet either. So this is a kind of a, again, another sensible compromise whereby they've got lots of fresh compost for them to root into, but not so much that it's going to be soaking wet and uh, full of stagnant, um, stagnant water. So we've opted for this um, pack size and then we can put them into a larger pot if required um, because we're doing this in late March and here in the UK um, we can still get frost until this part of the UK until late May so <clears throat> yeah where are we now late May late late March we could find that by by early May these will have filled out these packs and if it's still too cold to plant them out we'll put them into a slightly larger pot um, maybe one about so size uh, so that they can um, they can grow on a bit more through May, and then we can put them outside at the end of May or into uh, early June. Let's do some more. Just doing the um, the next uh, the next six. These are some nice little seedling geraniums, by the looks of it. Um, I mentioned earlier on about using a dibber, and this is a dibber. Introducing dibber, uh, and basically that's just another way of creating a hole in the compost. You give it a little bit of a push and a twist in there and um well look at that the perfect shape for that little uh, pyramid of compost to kind of drop into there let's give it a go see if i've got that right <laughs> yeah so perfect job for a dibber easy as that job done. Uh, another little tip for no extra charge of course uh, is that if you've got small seedlings like these, these look like busy lizards to me, um, maybe begonias actually, we shall find out. Anyway if they're a little bit small and you, you don't want to be kind of pulling them out and not if they're not coming out easily, what I've just done with these packs is if you go along and give the cells a little squeeze like that, just a gentle squeeze, it kind of breaks the seal between the compost and the plastic so that the little plug can slide out nice and easily there you go so give it a little squeeze don't be pulling too hard on the plant because that might damage the plant you should be able to just break the seal between the root and the plastic and it will slide out nice and easily there we go all bedded in two really good trays one slightly variable um tray all we need to do now oh he says reaching down to get his watering can is give them a little drink i'm just going to twist this rose around so that he's come out a bit more gently i'm not going to give them too much water because remember what i said earlier on about then getting too wet at this stage just enough just enough to get that just enough water to get that compost moistened and at the top of this little kind of stand here the excess water will will drain off and uh, this is not really a heated greenhouse it's it has got a um a little heater in there but it only just keeps the frost off it's a frost act so we don't have it too warm in here we're going to leave the door fairly open and the window open so that we get a flow of air through there so that um, we keep them on the cool side and uh, if they're too hot 
Well, the danger they might get scorched, but also they'll put on lots and lots of soft growth and they can get leggy. Um, good light and reasonable warmth. Uh, probably kind of, it'll get 15, 16 degrees in here on a, a, a March, March day, on a nice March day, I would imagine, normally. Um, and then we just keep the frost off. That's what we need to do is, is basically give them as much light as possible for these sorts of tender bedding plants. Um, keep the frost off and uh, don't overwater. Give them enough water so that they're moist, but not too wet. Hope that makes sense. Good luck and um, we'll keep you posted on the progress with these.